Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update. The former Israeli operative who worked with Jonathan Pollard, Rafi Eitan, revealed for the first time that he was the one who incriminated Pollard under orders from then Prime Minister of Israel and now President of Israel, Shimon Peres. Eitan made the statements in an interview with Yediot Haronot, saying, I had a deep feeling that I should not talk to the Americans about the episode because they certainly did not want what was best for Pollard. But on the other hand, I am a disciplined soldier. I have never acted against the government's orders, even when I thought we should be acting differently. The campaign to free Pollard said they were stunned that Israel became what they said was the first country to incriminate their own agent, but stopped short of criticizing Paris, saying neither we nor Jonathan want to dwell on the past. What matters is that the Israeli president is currently in the best possible position to end this unfortunate tragedy. Pollard, who was convicted of spying for Israel, will mark the beginning of his 28th year serving a life sentence on November the 21st. The JTA reports that Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Michael Oren, said that the first item on the U.S.-Israel agenda is the Palestinian bid for an upgrade to observer status at the U.N. Oren spoke to the JTA in a post-election interview on Thursday, saying of the U.N. bid, we regard this with the utmost seriousness and are closely communicating with the United States and other like-minded nations in the world. Oren also reiterated that President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu reaffirmed their relationship and commitment to work together closely on issues facing the Middle East. Oren added that Israel was confident of U.S. support in opposing the U.N. bid, which both the U.S. and Israel have stated would be seen as a unilateral action that would only harm the peace process. A Chicago man who was convicted in Israel of assisting Hamas has been removed by the U.S. Treasury from its designated terrorist list. Muhammad Salah filed a lawsuit earlier this year backed by the American Arab Discrimination Committee and the American Friends Service Committee in order to be removed from the terrorist list, which prevented him from getting a job or making simple purchases without the Treasury Department's permission. Salah was convicted in Israel in 1993 for funding Hamas. In 2007, American civil court convicted Salah of obstructing justice by lying under oath about the 1996 murder in Israel of Jewish-American teenager David Boim by Hamas terrorists, for which Salah was sentenced to 21 months in federal prison and fined $25,000. A group of clergy and members of the Presbyterian Church have issued a response to a letter sent last month by leaders of several Christian churches asking Congress to re-examine and possibly suspend U.S. aid to Israel, alleging human rights abuses. Presbyterians for Middle East Peace, or PFMEP, called the letter biased and said it moved the churches in the opposite direction of their goal of engagement. The Jewish Council for Public Affairs posted the PFMEP response on their website. They were among eight major Jewish organizations who canceled their participation in an annual interfaith meeting after the October letter to Congress was sent. The response letter from the Presbyterian Peace Group cited this as a tragic and destructive development that should not have happened, further saying the Presbyterian community may have lost valued partners in advocating for peace. And the stated clerk's actions have accomplished nothing but furthering a perception that the Presbyterian Church USA has an extreme and hostile agenda toward Israel. Ex-Tigers outfielder Delman Young pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges related to an anti-Semitic incident this past April in which a group of tourists outside the Hilton in Midtown Manhattan claimed that after they were approached by a homeless man wearing a kippah, Young began shouting anti-Semitic slurs at them and shoved one of them. Young subsequently apologized for his behavior and, quote, lapse in judgment, saying he was not anti-Semitic. Young was sentenced on Wednesday to a charge of aggravated harassment and will serve 10 days of community service. He'll also participate in a mandatory restorative justice program run by the Museum of Tolerance in New York City. And finally, today in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, many Jewish groups continue to organize to help in the recovery efforts. Two such groups are Nechama, the Jewish response to disaster based in Minneapolis, 
and Bonim Builder, which is part of the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey, based in Paramus. The two groups have partnered up and are cleaning up in the hard-hit Jersey town of Munaki. The two groups joined efforts on Friday to clean the Munaki Civic and Senior Center that was flooded during the storm. The groups were in Hoboken earlier this week helping out at a food pantry there, as well as at the Boys and Girls Community Center. Nehama is also partnering with the reform movement, galvanizing volunteers on cleanup and rebuilding efforts across the northern New Jersey area. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.